Hi everyone, I'm Zhou Ruyang from the Chinese University of Hong Kong. Uh, today I'm going to present our paper, Secure and Lightweight Deduplicate Storage via Shell Data Deduplication Before Encryption. And this is a joint work with my collaborator Jing Wei Li and my supervisor Professor Patrick Li. Okay, so first of all, all source storage is a popular uh, solution to reduce the data management overhead, especially when we are facing data explosion. So according to a report from IDC, it predicts that the global data sphere will increase to 175 terabytes by 2025, and around 49% of them will reside in public clouds. And generally, uh, also storage approach needs to satisfy two requirements. The first one is storage efficiency, which means the cloud storage provider should reduce the storage overhead as much as possible. And the second one is data confidentiality, which means it also needs to define against data privacy leakage and protect all source data against uh, authorized access. So data duplication is just a, can, a common approach to realize storage efficiency. It usually identifies the duplicate as the level of chunk so it, uh, its idea is just to compute a fingerprint of each chunk while, while cryptography hash function and maintains a fingerprint index to track existing chunks, which maps the chunk fingerprint to the corresponding address of each existing chunk. And given an uh, input chunk, it can check the fingerprint index to ensure that only one physical copy of duplicate chunk is stored. And according to previous study, uh, data duplication can achieve around 10 times storage savings in backup workloads. So to further realize data confidentiality, current approach follows a paradigm called deduplication after encryption, DAE, to augment deduplication with encryption. It aims to carefully encrypt plain text chunk to preserve deduplication effectiveness on ciphertext chunk after encryption. And here, message lock encryption is a cryptographic primitive to realize DAE by using a key derived from the chunk content for encryption and decryption, such that duplicate plain text chunk will always be encrypted du to duplicate ciphertext chunk and enable the duplication. For example, a typical instance of message lock encryption is convergent encryption, in which the key is the hash of the plain text chunk content to prevent the adversary from enumerating all possible keys. Current DAE approaches always deploy a dedicated key server for key generation. Although conventional approaches always follow DAE to realize both storage efficiency and data confidentiality, we argue that DAE has some fundamental limitations. First, DAE incurs high key management overhead. So from the storage perspective, it needs to keep a key for each chunk, which increase the metadata overhead. And from the performance perspective, it needs to uh, leverage expensive cryptographic primitive to protect the key generation process, in which introduce significant uh, performance overhead. Second, DAE is incompatible with compression as it, the cloud can only view the ciphertext chunk, which tend to have high entropy content and cannot be further compressed. Although the client can perform compression locally before encryption, but this would leak the compressed chunk length and introduce extra information leakage. Third, DAE has a security risk as the state-of-the-art DAE approaches always deploy a key server for key generation to define against brute force attacks. This kind of centralized server-aided key management would let the key server become a single point of attack. Also, DAE is deterministic by nature as it realizes one-to-one -one mapping between plant text chunks to the self text chunk for deification. Uh, the adversary can launch frequency anal analyze to infer the original plain text chunk from the frequency distribution of the self text chunk. In this paper, we explore a new paradigm called deduplication before encryption, DBE, which performs deduplication on plain text chunk followed by encrypting only non-duplicate plain text chunks. DBE offers several benefits over DAE by design, which address the limitation of DAE. Since deduplication is applied first, DBE can encrypt each non-duplicate plain text chunk with a content independent key as in traditional symmetric encryption without compromising the duplication. So this uh, avoids generating and store per chunk content derived keys and reduce the key management overhead. 
Second, DBE can apply compression to the non-duplicate plain text chunk after deduplication for extra storage saving, followed by encrypting the compressed non-duplicate chunk. So this addresses the incompatibility with compression in DAE. Third, since DBE can perform encryption with a content-independent key, it no longer needs a key server for key generation as in server-aided key management in DAE. So this removes the single point of, of, of attack in DAE. However, the main question of realizing DBE is how should the deduplication be protected? So here, since the deduplication process in DBE is no longer protected by encryption, so this paradigm remains unexplored in the literature and the existing study mostly focused on DAE. So here we summarize our contribution in this paper. We propose DB, a shielded DBE-based deduplicated storage system based on shielded execution. So DB explores realizing DBE with the aid of Intel SGX. It protects the deduplication process in DBE by Intel SGX and apply frequency-based duplication to achieve high performance and mitigate the frequency leakage. We also conduct extensive experiments to validate that DB, DB outperforms conventional DAE approaches in performance, storage savings, and uh, security. So before introducing DB's design, I would like to present the background of Intel SGX. So briefly, SGX realized a shielded execution environment called an NCAVE in a secure memory region called the NCAVE page cache, EPC. And the NCAVE provides two kinds of interface to interact with an untrusted application outside the NCAVE, in which ECOS permits the outside application to safely access the in NCAVE contents, and all calls allow the in NCAVE code to issue function calls in outside application. SGX also introduced some performance overhead. First, the size of the NCAVE page cache is very limited. Once memory usage of the NCAVE exceeds this limitation, it will incur expensive EPC pigeon overhead. In addition, both E calls and O calls involve some hardware operation. So this introduces high context switching overhead. Thus, the main design challenge here is how to mitigate the SGX overhead in DB. So here we present the high-level overview of DB. It performs target-based duplication to remove duplicate data of multiple clients in the cloud. So compare with DAE, a major difference here is DBs avoid perform key generation, so it does not need to maintain a key server. So to prevent the cloud from accessing any plain test chunk during the duplication process, DB deploy an NCAVE in the cloud and perform the duplication and compression of the plain test chunk in the NCAVE. So each client set up two secure communication channel with the cloud. So here, the control channel is used to transmit the com command of storage operation to the cloud. And the data channel is used to transmit the plan test chunk to the NCAVE directly. So currently, DB implements a Diffie-Hellman key exchange protocol between a client and the uh, NCAVE in order to agree on a session key to protect this data channel, such that the cloud cannot infer the plan test chunk through this data channel. And DB's core idea is to perform the de de deduplication over plan test chunk in the NCAVE. And the, the issue here is how to manage the fingerprint index to mitigate the SGX performance overhead. So we propose frequency-based deduplication to address this issue. It is based on our insight that the frequencies of chunk are highly skilled in practical backup workloads, and a small fraction of chunk can contribute a large fraction of duplicate the, uh, data. So for example, in VM dataset, we observe that the top 5% of frequent chunk contribute uh, to 97% of duplicate chunk of the whole dataset. So this implies that if we just maintain a small fingerprint index in the NCAVE to track the most frequent chunk, we can remove a large fraction of duplicate data and achieve high storage efficiency. So the idea of frequency-based deduplication is just to separate the deduplication process based on the chunk frequencies in two phases. The first phase deduplication manages a small fingerprint index in the NCAVE to remove duplicate data from most frequent chunks. So this mitigates the EPC paging overhead. 
And second phase duplication maintains the full index outside the NK to remove remaining duplicates for the less frequent chunk by all calls. So this can reduce the context switching overhead as it's only querying the full index outside the NK by all calls for a limited fraction of less frequent chunk. Here we present the architecture of the NK. The NK tracks the frequencies of plant test chunk to identify the most frequent and the less frequent chunks for frequency based duplication. And the frequency based duplication first removes duplicates of most frequent chunk in the NK and then interact with the full index to remove remaining duplicate data of less frequent chunk by all costs. So here we use a query key to protect the interaction between the full index and the NK to prevent the cloud from learning the information uh, during the queries. After the duplication, the NK compressed now duplicate chunk and the encrypt compressed chunk via a long-term data key for storage. So later I will introduce more detail of the major modules in this architecture. So here to identify the most frequent chunk, the NK uses a coming sketch to track the approx uh, approximate frequencies of each chunk by a fixed size space with, with a small arrow. And the coming sketch is just a two dimensional array of counters. So our key design here is to limit the computational overhead of mapping the plant test chunk to the counter. So our insight is that the chunk fingerprint is computed as a cryptographic hash. So we can treat the chunk fingerprint as a random input value and map it directly to a counter without compromising the accuracy of the coming sketch. So here, the NK partition the fingerprint into R pieces and map each piece to a counter. So this design has nearly no extra performance overhead, while the traditional coming sketch maps the input to the counter of different rows using independent hash function and has extra computation overhead. To estimate the frequencies of a chunk, the NK use the minimum value of the map counter of the chunk. And the first phase deduplication removes the duplicate of K most frequent plant test chunk. So based on our pure uh, insight, we expect that a large fraction of duplicate data can be removed by the first phase deduplication. So here, the NK maintains a small fingerprint that's called the top K index to record the K most frequent plant test chunk. So we implement the top K index as a combination of the mean heap and the hash table. The mean heap is used to differentiate the top K frequent and the less frequent plant test chunk. The hash table is used for duplicate detection as in conventional deduplication. And the NK takes the estimated frequencies from the coming sketch of the plant test chunk uh, and, uh, and the chunk fingerprint as the input. It first checks the root of the mean heap if the input frequency is smaller than the minimum frequencies of the mean heap, then the NK skip querying the hash table for this chunk and proceed to the second phase deduplication. Otherwise, the NK use the input fingerprint to look up the hash table and update the mean heap. So I, here I would like to highlight that the top K index has low EPC usage as the space complexity of both mean heap and the hash table are okay. K is a constant. The second phase deduplication aims to remove duplicate from the remaining less frequent chunk that are not removed by the first phase deduplication. Here we manage a full index outside the NK, which maps the encrypted fingerprint to encrypted chunk information. Our design here is that we use a query key to protect the chunk information stored in the full index outside the NK. To query the full index, the NK deterministically encrypt the fingerprint of each remaining plant test chunk with a query key such that duplicate plant test chunk would generate the same encrypted fingerprints and enable duplica uh, duplication detection. So uh, the NK finally issue all calls with the encrypted fingerprint to query the full index and remove duplicate chunk from the remaining less frequent chunk. So we implement DB in C++ based on Intel SJX, SDK, OpenSSL, and Intel SSL. A DB realized fast CEC for chunking and LD4 for compression. It contains around 17,000 lines of code. For our evaluation, we collect five real-world datasets for, of backup workloads, including source code, docker doc image, file system snapshot, and the VM, VM snapshot. So we run our experiment in a local cluster with multiple machines connected with 10 gigabits Ethernet, and each machine here has an Intel Core i5 CPU and a 32 gigabyte memory. 
we first evaluate the upload and download performance of the overall system, we consider a single client that successfully uploads the same file twice. So to, to examine the maximum achievable performance for storing non-duplicate data and duplicate data without the impact of this I.O. So in this experiment, we load the input file into the client's memory before each test and let the cloud store all data in memory. So we compare DB with three DAE approaches, including duplicate, TED, and CE. The figure here shows that DB outperforms all DAE approaches in upload. And the reason is DB avoids the key generation overhead as well as encryption and compression for different data. For example, DB can achieve up to 30 times speed ups over duplicates when, uh, when uploading duplicate data. For the download speed compared with DAE and the DB, uh, DB incurs around 8.5% uh, uh, download speed drop due to the old call from uh, moving chunks into the NK for decryption and decompression. But we argue that this overhead is limit. We also evaluate the upload and download performance in real world data set. So unlike in previous slides, here we enable the cloud side disk I.O and upload all snapshot of each data set. And finally, let the client download them on disk. We compare DB with uh, CE as it is fastest DAE approaches. The figure here shows that the speed of uploading and downloading each snapshot in DB and CE. We can observe that the upload speed of DB gradually increase in subsequent snapshot as they include more duplicate plant test chunk. So DB does not need to perform compression and encryption on those duplicate data. In contrast, CE is consistently slower than DB in uploads as it perform key generation and encryption for all plant test chunk. For example, in FSL, the upload speed of DB can achieve up to 277 megabyte per second, while the maximum upload speed in CE is just 179 megabyte per second. The download speed of both DB and CE are most the same since the disk I.O. is the bottleneck, and we can further mitigate this issue by using existing approaches to reduce random disk I.O., and we post this as our future work. Uh, here, we compare the key metadata overhead of DB with DAE to show DB's benefit in storage efficiency. So recall that DAE approach needs to maintain a key for each ciphertext chunk before deduplication, while DB maintains two long-term keys as well as a random IV for each non-duplicate ciphertext chunk after deduplication as in traditional symmetric encryption. So we measure the key metadata overhead as the size of all keys and the IV used in encryption. So here, the figure shows key metadata overhead of DB and DAE after storing each snapshot. For DAE, the key metadata size increases linearly with the number of stored snapshots as DAE manage per chunk keys. So in contrast, DB reduces the key metadata size of DAE as it only stores an IV and of each now duplicate several chunk. For example, in FSL, DB saves around 93% of key metadata compared with DAE. We also evaluate the frequency leakage in DB. So here we quantify the frequency leakage by KLD, which is a relative entropy to the uniform distribution and using imperial study. And a lower KLD impl uh, implies a higher security. For the baseline, we compare DB with TED, which is the state-of-the-art DAE approach to define against frequency leakage. And it is the idea is to store extra data to hide the actual frequency distribution of the underlying plant test chunk. For DB, it incurs frequency leakage when querying the full index outside the NK in second phase deduplication. And we count it as frequency deduplication a distribution based on the encrypted fingerprint in the old calls. The experiment results show that DB outperformed both CE and TED since it performed the first phase deduplication in the NK and fully protect the frequencies of top K frequent chunk. For example, DB reduced the KLD of TED by up to 87% in Linux dataset. And well, TED needs to store around 50% extra data to enhance its security. So in conclusion, DB realized DBE while well, into SJX, it performed deduplication and compression over plant text chunk in the NK to ensure data confidentiality. 
We also propose frequency-based deduplication to mitigate SJX performance overhead and reduce the frequency leakage. Our evaluation showed that DB outperforms conventional DA approaches in performance, storage efficiency, and security. And for more detail, please refer our paper as well as our technical report. So thanks for your listening and I welcome all your questions.